Microsoft Build 2024 was just a couple days ago and I wanted to talk about some of the biggest things to come out of it. What's going on? My name is Omar and I'm coming to you from Microsoft Dev Radio, a community where we try to get developers engaged with Azure and Microsoft's suite of products. If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe, click the link in the description, which will take you to Microsoft's engagement hub where you can sign up to get trainings, tutorials, and code samples that can help you become a better developer. Build Day 2024 was a couple of days ago and Microsoft rolled out a lot of great things. And we're not gonna cover all of them in this video, but we're specifically gonna cover is how Azure is going to be affected by AI. OpenAI's multimodal module GPT 4.0 is now available to developers on Microsoft Azure AI. These things have included OpenAI's models like GPT 4 Turbo, but now they are including GPT 4.0. Now, I know what you're thinking, GPT-40's image and vision capabilities have already been existing on Azure for a minute now. GPT-40's image and vision capabilities are already available via OpenAI's own API and ChatGPT. But the thing that we are really, really looking at as being a great breakthrough is the voice mode, and that's still a few weeks away, but it is coming. And now all those features will be available in Microsoft Azure. The CEO of the company shared a lot of ways in which people could use GPT-40 through Copilot. This included sharing your screen or session with GPT-40 powered Copilot and asking it to help you with playing Minecraft. Hey Copilot, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing great. And it looks like you're about to dive into some Minecraft. Ready to build, explore, and maybe dodge a few mobs? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to make a sword. My son plays this game all the time, and I have no idea what I'm doing. No worries. I'm here to help you impress your son. I see you've got a crafting table in front of you, which is a great start. To craft a sword, you'll need some materials. Can you open your inventory? Just press E on your keyboard. Yeah, uh, do I have what I need? Let's see. You've got some sticks. Perfect for the sword's handle. But it looks like you're missing the material for the blade. You can use wood, stone, iron, gold, or diamond. Let's start by gathering some wood or stone. Shall we head out and find some resources? Yeah, that sounds great. Oh my god, what's that? Oh no, it's a zombie! Run! You need to get away from it fast. Either sprint away or quickly build a tower of blocks straight up to get out of its reach. If you can find a shelter or dig into the side of a hill, do it now. Just make sure it can't reach you. All right, I think I might be safe now. Cool. That was a close one. Great job finding shelter. Nadella also went on to talk about what developers can do with GPT-40 on Azure AI. One of the coolest things is that now any app, any website can essentially be turned into a full multimodal, full duplex conversational canvas. What that means is people can create agents that'll help people navigate not only their apps, but their websites as well. Think of it like our old friend Office Assistant, you know, the little paperclip that a lot of people are familiarized with. So if you're a guy who's looking for some shoes to wear for an overnight hiking trip, Azure AI can now help you with that process. Should I use these shoes? It's the mountains. It's probably gonna be cold. Hey, no worries. Let me take a look. Ah, those are the Trekstar hiking sandals. While they're fantastic for summer hikes and keeping your feet cool, they might not be the best choice for cold mountain. Oh my goodness, mountain. so, okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Pick the best thing that I should use and can you just add it to my cart, just one product? No worries. Let's go with the Trek Ready Hawking Boots. They're durable, provide great ankle support, and most importantly, they'll keep your feet warm in the cold mountains. I'll add them to your cart now. Now, one thing that can help with developers a lot is what Microsoft CTO Kevin Scott showed us what GPT-40 can do with code. One of the things that you have uh, heard from Rajesh and that you'll be hearing a lot more of at Build is like part of what the Copilot stack is allowing us to do is to unify the experience across all of these Copilots into one logical Microsoft Copilot where you don't have to really pay attention to which Microsoft product or service you're in. Like the Copilot just understands all of your context and delivers all of the capability of the model in the context of your data and your tasks to you when you need it. So the other thing that is really driving progress is not just this sort of completion of the Copilot stack, um, this sort of progress that we're making and filling out that toolkit for you all so that it is easier for you to build software. But we are riding like a fundamental wave in, um, 
in the development of this AI platform where if you just sort of look at compute over time, like how much, uh, how much uh, GPU cycles or accelerator cycles that we're using to train the very biggest models in the world, since about 2012, uh, like that rate of increase in compute when applied to training has been increasing exponentially. And we are nowhere near the point of diminishing marginal returns on how powerful we can make AI models as we increase the scale of compute. So we're sort of doing two things at once uh, at Microsoft. So we are optimizing the current frontier uh, and like building that toolkit to help you all leverage it, while at the same time investing at a pretty incredible rate in pushing the frontier forward. And so one of the super interesting things that has just happened uh, as we're sort of pushing the, uh, the frontier forward and like really, really driving forward on efficiency is what our partners OpenAI launched last week uh, in the form of GPT-40. As Satya mentioned earlier, uh, GPT-40 is like a really stunning achievement. A multimodal model that understands uh, a bunch of different input types from video to text uh, to speech uh, that can respond in a bunch of rich ways from uh, text to speech uh, and eventually video. Uh, it can respond to you or to the interactions uh, for users in their applications in real time. Uh, and in the case of the chat GPT demos that folks have uh, seen, you can even interrupt the model uh, so that you can have really fluid interactions with these systems. And then an enormous amount of work has gone into GPT-40, uh, both the model itself as, as well as the supporting infrastructure around it to ensure that it's safe by design. So I wanted to, also just remind folks uh, like this efficiency point is, is real. So while we're off you know, building bigger supercomputers to get the next big models out and to deliver more and more capability to you, like we're also grinding away on making the current generation of models much, much more efficient. So between the launch of, of GPT-4, which is not quite a year and a half ago now, it's 12 times cheaper to make a call to GPT-40 than the original chat, uh, or the GPT-4 model. Uh, and it's also six times faster in terms of uh, like time to first token response. So it's just really extraordinary like how much progress we're making because of like the full set of optimizations that we're doing from the silicon that we're building, networks, data center optimization, as well as like an incredible amount of software work that we're doing on top of all of this hardware and infrastructure to really tune the performance of these systems. And the great thing is, is again, there's no point of diminishing marginal return here. And one of the messages that I want to land with you all today uh, is that you can count on things getting more robust and cheaper uh, at a pretty aggressive clip over time. So it's like a really important thing to internalize, like something, uh, you know, like we challenge ourselves on at Microsoft all the time, is like aim for things that are like really truly ambitious because like all of this optimization work is gonna accrue to make things uh, like really ubiquitous in terms of like how you can go deploy them. All principal engineer Jennifer Marsman had to do was point her phone at the code and AI helped her troubleshoot the code in real time. Microsoft Build Conference is tomorrow and I have not been sleeping and I am making stupid mistakes. Can you help me take a look at this code? I'd be happy to help. Could you tell me a bit more about the issue you're facing with the code? For example, are you getting an error message or is the code not doing what you expect it to do? Let me just show this to you. It looks like you're working on a Python function to summarize main points from a keynote. What I'm trying to do is go through a list of keynoters and summarize all of their work. And my problem is that I wanted to just add Kevin's name to the end of the keynote list, and it added every character of his name instead of just his whole name. What did I do wrong here? Change keynote list.extend to keynote list.append last keynote. This will add Kevin as a single element to your list, just like Satya and Rajesh. Ooh, that sounds good. Let me try that. Sounds good. Give it a go and let me know how it works. Okay, I replaced extend with append. Does that look right? Yes, that looks better. All right, I made that change. Let me run it and try. Sounds good. 
Let's see how it goes. It worked. Satya, Rajesh, and Kevin all came out. Awesome. I'm glad it worked out. Sometimes the smallest things can trip us up, especially when we're sleep deprived. Thank you. There's a lot more to come out of this, but I think the things that we've seen so far are super exciting and can help us into the future build limitless things that will help an abundance of people. If you're looking for more information, please hit the subscribe button and click the link in the description, which will take you to Microsoft's Engagement Hub, where you can become ingrained in the Microsoft development community.